We interrupt your regularly scheduled program because there are bugs in my yarn. I spoke too soon. Look at this. Look at this. There's a bug there. There's a bug there. Um, my garage studio space is a mess, and I have a friend coming over next weekend so that I can help her get started with her new knitting machine. This is the knitting machine that I found at the Evil Mad Scientist garage sale, and I want to film some of that, so we need enough space in here for two people to film a video, and also I don't want her to judge me too harshly, so I feel the need to clean all of this up. And <laughs> Y'all have only been getting a very narrow view of what is going on in this space because I have control of the cameras and I have control of my background, but it is worse than you probably think. We're gonna call this my spring cleaning video. I set down a list of goals for myself and I'm gonna work on this in chunks until it's done or it's mostly done and then we'll go from there. And time to switch to the other camera to show y'all what is going on here. Okay, this is the view that y'all normally get from my camera. As you can see, knitting machine, and then a bunch of stands for stuff. I have lights and this overhead camera stand, and then cones of yarn on the floor, and this bit of mess with cables here, which is probably not going to get better, but we can always hope. My yarn storage is getting a little full, and the cones have collapsed over here, so I need to reorganize this. But I also have a pile of just, like, stuff hanging out here. Um, there's a color changer, and cast on comb, and a stack of laptops, and a hard drive on the floor, which probably shouldn't be on the floor. And then my desk is a mess and needs to be cleaned up. And then I have this loom over here that I set up and then never actually finished the project that I worked onto it. So I'm gonna try to find a better way to store this. It might fit in one of the cabinets if I take the legs off. I would like to finish this eventually, but not yet. And then we have the table <clears throat> that was meant to be like a temporary thing that I set up every once in a while to get stuff done, but now has become kind of like a permanent fixture here. I need to clean this up and reorient it. I want to have this go the other way, like horizontally, and maybe sit the end of it over there and then use it as like a staging space for stuff when I'm filming. But I need to clean the yarn off and I need to find a better way to store my knitting machines because like right now, this is my 270, it's just sitting there. And these package up nicely into like little boxes, but then the ribber just kind of hangs out. Like here's the ribber for my 270 and it's just, it's just chill in there. I'd like to fit them underneath this cabinet thing. They're too long to go in like lengthwise, but I could turn them like sideways and then just shove them under there and maybe that'll work, but we'll see. And then I have this massive collection of yarn by my sewing machines. <laughs> it's just expanding. Um, and then down here I have my blinker, which I haven't started using yet, and then a pile of other knitting machines, but those are only visiting. They aren't going to stay here so they can hang out wherever. And then my <laughs> LK150. <laughs> and then a couple bags that I take to things. Like this one just has a garter carriage in it. Um, this is the garter carriage is compatible with the 930. I need to test it again and see what's up. Okay, so we got a big mess here. Oh, and these are clear plastic storage bins that I'm planning to store the rest of my yarn in because right now I have them, I have some boxes full of stuff under here, but I can't see what's in there. And I want to be able to see what's in there. So like, I don't try to buy more yarn when I already have what I need. Okay, so the first goal is to get all of my yarn in one place to just like package it all up into bags and boxes and go from there um, so I can figure out what I have and find a way to organize it. And then once I get everything off the floor, I can start cleaning and vacuuming things. I'm gonna set this camera up to do time-lapse so that y'all can see what's going on as I do things. Okay, let's take stock of where we are and let me get out of the middle of the pile. So first, I've managed to clear out most of the yarn pile behind my sewing machines. There's still some yarn over there. That's a hand knitting project that I may or may not finish, but probably will frog. Um, see what else we got here. This is my odds and ends. This is bits of yarn that aren't enough to make a full thing, but I probably still will use for something eventually. Um, I decided to put it in clear bin so I could see it better. And then this box is just waste yarn for bulkier stuff. And then over here we have bits and ends that need to be rewound. Um, and then the main hoard. So we have cones in here and in this Joanne's box. Um, and then over here, 
we have this massive box of bulky yarn. Uh, I purchased this for a specific project and then realized that it was both too thick for my bulky machine and terrible. Like, it collects so much static that it's almost impossible to wind. So I contacted Joann's and attempted to return the portion that I hadn't used yet. And they said, no, nah, we don't want it back. Here's a refund to keep it. So now I have a bunch of this bulky yarn. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It might wind up like a mindless hand knitting project, maybe a blanket or something, but we will see. And then we have several containers of, okay, okay. This yarn has bugs in it. There's no getting around that. I think I noticed them and put them in these bags to like quarantine them, but the problem has just gotten worse. I might just toss this. This was some experimental yarn I found on, um, what is that site? Color Mart, in an attempt to find something to replace mohair, but I will not tolerate bugs. It doesn't look like the rest of my, doesn't look like any of the rest of my natural yarn has anything in it, but I will keep an eye out as I go. So this bag is full of yarn. I had a box full of like nice yarn that I didn't want to mess up and I just completely forgot about it. And then this is another box full of the other loosely caked yarn. So I've essentially separated it into cakes and cones because they take up space in different ways. And then I have this bag full of finished things down here. Well, the green sweater on top is not actually finished. It's mostly finished. It's for a video that I started filming like a year ago and never finished that I should probably get around to. But all of the stuff is cleared out, so I was hoping when I got this cleared out I would have enough space to vacuum, but it's looking like that is not the case. So I think I'm going to clean off my desktopy thing and then the space underneath it, and then organize the yarn and then get around to vacuuming the floor of this place. But it's getting worse before it gets better, which is understandable. Oh, and then I started building this box of tools that don't fit anywhere else, like weights for the river. Now that I have all of my yarn in one place, it has me, my initial reaction was, oh my God, I have too much yarn, which is probably true. But then my second reaction was like, well, maybe I should stash down. Maybe I should try to work through this pile of yarn or give some of it away or whatever else. And then my third thought was, no, um, I do a lot of swatching. I do a lot of prototyping, especially when I'm building patterns. I just need to be more thoughtful about how I choose my yarn for things. Like when I'm looking at a new project, I should shop from my stash first before going online and looking for new things. So I'm going to try to do that. And a lot of this yarn is already earmarked for projects that are on the list of things to do that I just haven't gotten to yet. This should be doable. I should be able to work through all of this. Hand knitters get to this point where like their stash grows beyond what they could possibly knit within their entire lifetime. And I'm sure that happens to machine knitters as well, but we go through yarn a lot more quickly than hand knitters. So this is not an unmanageable hoard. I mean, it is a hoard and it's a little big and I would like to get it a little smaller, but it is not an unreasonable hoard for a machine knitter, especially a YouTube machine knitter where I make all kinds of weird stuff. All right, let's organize. We interrupt your regularly scheduled program because there are bugs in my yarn. I spoke too soon. Look at this, look at this. There's a bug there. There's a bug there. Um. So the thing that people are usually worried about with yarn is moths, and these are clearly not moths. From my research, I believe they are carpet beetles. The way that people recommend getting rid of them is by putting your yarn in the freezer. But I have a tiny little apartment-sized freezer and no room for that. The other option is to heat things up to a certain level, but I also have a tiny little apartment-sized oven. So I think my best bet is probably just to quarantine all of my wool and natural fiber yarn and probably wait until the summer and bake it all in a hot car. Um, do that thing that you're not supposed to do with children and animals and just put it in black trash bags and leave it in my car in the sun for however long it takes. <sighs> Alright, let me find a bunch of Ziploc bags to quarantine this all out.
Okay, this is where we are. My camera overheated, I'm not sure what it caught, but this is the countertop area as it currently stands. I've got bulky yarns on the right and thinner yarns on the left. The idea is that the things on the left will be usable on my standard gauge machine and the things on the right would be usable on my LK150 and my bulky machine. And down below we have the bins and the swatch bucket. So on the bottom we have the quarantined yarn and for now this is just going to hang out in airtight plastic bags until it gets warm enough for me to bake them in my car. And then all of the natural yarn is getting put in bins as well. I don't have the lid on the top one yet because I think I might have a few more skeins. And then the swatch bucket stays the same. But <laughs> this is not all of my yarn. This is just as far as I got last time. I still have a bunch of cones and I still have a bunch of cakes. And these cakes were made on my chunky winder and they don't fit in the shoe organizer thingy. So I'm not sure where to put them. I might put them in the cabinet above, but then I won't see them and I will forget about them. I will just have to remember to try to open that cabinet. And for these cones here, I'm going to try to organize them on the countertop thingy. Probably stack them up several high and then also in front of the shoe organizer. It feels like I have more yarn than I did when I started this, but I must remember that I had cones stashed elsewhere. And now I'm just consolidating all of them, so that's what's actually happening. Alright, let's get this sorted out. It is a different day, and I don't remember where I left off yesterday, so let me show you the state of things. So over here we have yarn organized, and we have clear plastic bins down below, and I wound up putting my large cakes up in this cabinet, and I will just have to try to remember that they are there. Uh, and then this table, slowly clearing off. Um, I have this bucket full of tools that don't really fit anywhere else. Usually your tools will fit in your case, but I have a bunch of extras that I got through various things and like things that go with my rivers that don't fit anywhere. So they're going to live in this bin and it's going to be down in the back here or probably more likely just live on the floor as I make things. And then this chunk of box is uh, waste yarn. So bulky waste yarn for my bulky machine and then fingering weight. Uh, unmoisturized cotton for my standard gauge. And this is my 270 packaged up in its box. I don't think there's a decent way to store it underneath the cabinets. They're not quite high enough to stack things. So I think what I'm just going to do is have my knitting machines that aren't in use live underneath this table. Um, and here's the river for that. That should live there as well. This is where I do my overhead shots for the videos. And this is a video that I haven't finished yet, but I should get to at some point. But more time lapse. Okay, I'm calling it done. I didn't get to my desk or to the loom, but that's okay. I can deal with those later. Let me show y'all the current state of things. Desky area. Countertop area remains as it was. Um, I'm leaving this box of tools down here for now. I'm not sure if I like it that way. It might change. And then I've got, this is the cable for my AYAB interface. So we'll kick that off to the side. And then I took down some of the extra lights I had in the back there. I don't really need them anymore. I'll probably return them to the friend that I borrowed them from. And then I decided to store my machines under the table. So from left to right, we have 910, uh, river for the 910, 930, and then 270, and then that's, this river on top is the river for the 270. And half these machines are going to be rehomed within the next couple months, so they won't take up as much space for so long. And I managed to fit my LK150 into the cabinet, so that's out of the way. And then I have my linker stored under the table there. So yeah, that's about it for this video. Um... <laughs> Let me know if you want to hear more about the bugs in the yarn saga. That's probably going to take a couple months, but I can document it if y'all are interested. 
Uh, thanks for watching. Happy knitting.